G'day and welcome. Uh, you've just dropped in on the fourth video that I'm making to answer four questions that a subscriber gave me. So Dana Shun, thank you for your list. Uh, this is the second of two trigonometric equations that he wants solved. And uh, here it is. We're asked to solve this. 2 sine x plus pi on 3 equals negative 1. And we're asked to do this in this restricted domain with x lying between 0 and 2 pi radians. So notice, just a few observations before we get started. We're dealing in radians, not degrees. So if at any point we have to reach for our calculator, we must make sure it's in radian mode. Uh, and if we're fortunate enough to deal with exact ratios, we can just choose the appropriate triangles. Second thing I want you to notice is this doesn't look pretty. That might scare students a bit. We have what's known as a phase shift in physics. Uh, the two is not too much of a problem. It actually works out to be a friend in a way. But let's see how we would solve it. First of all, I'm going to divide both sides by two because I need to get down to what x is worth. So getting the 2 out of the road is a handy thing. Dividing both sides by 2 gives me this. Getting rid of the sine function by taking the inverse sine, that's what it's designed for, uh, of both sides gives me x plus pi on 3 is equal to the inverse sine of a half. Negative a half, sorry. Now, we're at a point, I'm not going to subtract the pi on 3 just yet. Just yet. I want to look at this angle first. Remember, negative uh, inverse trig functions are angles. They're what we had before we applied a trig function. What is this angle? Well, I'm debating whether to go to the unit circle first or the triangles first. Let's talk about the triangles first and then the unit circle will make sense. We have two basic triangles that we use and you should become quite familiar with them and quite adept at drawing them. One's the 45 degree, I'll write 45 degrees, and it's pi on 4 radians. Now if you have trouble remembering that, just remember the 4 goes with the 45. It's got 4. The 45 degree is what you get when you cut a square in half. And if it's got a side of 1 and 1, using Pythagoras' theorem, we know that's root 2. Well, we do not get a half in this triangle. Let's move to the next one. This is a 60-30 degree triangle, which is what we get when we cut an equilateral triangle in half. And if this is 1, then this would be 1. That would be worth 2, so 2 and 2. 2, 2, 2 for our equilateral triangle. And using Pythagoras' theorem, we get root there. Now, in terms of radians, 60 degrees is pi on 3, and 30 degrees is pi on 6. And you can see that the 6 and the 3 are together in this triangle. 60 degrees, pi on 3, 30 degrees, pi on 6. And here we do have a half, or at least we've got a 1 and a 2. Forget the negative sign for the moment. What angle gives us a sine value of a half? Well, sine is opposite over hypotenuse. Two is definitely the hypotenuse. We want the angle opposite the one. It's this angle. So sine of pi on six is equal to one over two, opposite 
over hypotenuse. That's definitely the angle and definitely the triangle we need. Now, notice it's not a half, it's negative a half, so we've got to think in terms of our unit circle. Now we could think in terms of ASTC, all stations to central, or however you remember that. But I want to go a little bit more basic than this. Unit circle. Remember that when we draw a triangle in, the height of the triangle is the sine value. And I want a height of negative a half. So there's negative one, so negative a half will be here. So if that's going to be the height of my triangle, I'm talking about this triangle and this triangle. They're the two triangles. There's my 30 degrees, or actually, let's stick with our radians. Pi on 6, pi on 3, pi on 6, pi on 3. If you like, if it wasn't a unit circle, you could consider that to be 1, 2, and root 3. Just rotate the triangle and flip it to put it there. So they're the two angles that are going to give us a sine value of negative a half. If you used your ASTC, you can see here that the sine value is positive here and positive there because all the ratios are positive. And if we wanted it to be negative, it, the angle would have to be in one of these two quadrants, which is as we found it. So however you come to that conclusion, that's it. Now, what are our angles? Well, what we do, or what I get my students to do, is to divide the one radian up into six, because we're talking about pi on six. That's half a radian, so if I divide here and here, and here and here, I've got pi and 6, 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 pi and 6. I'll actually write them in. 2 pi and 6, that's pi and 3. 3 pi and 6, that's pi and 2. 4 pi and 6, 5, 6. That's 7 pi on 6. 8, 9, 10, 11 pi on 6. Because I've divided the bottom into 6 sections as well. Remember that the straight angle is pi radians, so pi on 6 is 1 sixth of that. So we just count them up. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we've got, those are our two angles, 7 pi on 6 and 11 pi on 6. But we've got a complicating factor. We want this to equal the angle, but x must lie between 2 pi and 0. What I get my students to do is this. I get them to say we're trying to find x plus pi on 3 at this stage, so I get them to add pi on 3 to both sides here. I'll do this in black. So pi on 3 is less than or equal to x plus pi on 3 less than or equal to, I'll, write, I'll just write it as 2 pi plus pi on 3 at the moment. And that's what this angle is. It's the x plus pi on, x plus pi on 3. And we're trying to find this angle between these. So, where's pi on 3? Here. So we're starting here and we're going right round a complete cycle and back here. Well, I think you can see that we've still got the same two angles. Whether we start here and go around, we still encounter those two lines, or here and go around, we still encounter the same two lines. So this angle is in the right domain. So we can say sorry, 7 pi on 6, or this angle is also still in the correct domain, 
11 pi r 6. I know I've scribbled all over this, but you wouldn't do all of this necessarily when you're solving it in a test. Uh, I'm trying to explain a few principles as we go. And it's at this point that we would subtract the pi on 3 from both sides. So I think I'll leave it at black. So x would equal 7 pi on 6 minus pi on 3 or 11 pi on 6 minus pi on 3. Again, how do we subtract? We must make denominators the same. So we would double the top and the bottom. Oh, we'll put it in. Double the top and bottom. So we get 7 pi minus 2 pi is 5 pi on 6. And 11 minus 2 is 9 pi on 6. And I think you see you can actually simplify that. So our answers would be 5 pi on 6. And dividing these by 3, 3 pi on 2, which is actually a familiar angle, isn't it? 3 pi on 2 is uh, 270 degrees, our three-quarter angle. That's the problem solved. Of course, before you move on, it's nice to substitute. Now, I'm, a, I'm aware the video's got long already, so I'm not going to do it. But I would suggest converting your uh, calculator to radian mode and simply putting 5 pi on 6 in here, typing that in and checking that you get negative 1, and doing the same with 3 pi on 2. And, uh, and that way you can be confident you've got the right answer, even without looking at the back of the book or whatever. And that's certainly what I would encourage you to do during a test if you have the time. So you see there's certain payback. If you can work quickly, then you create a bit of time where you can check most, if not all, of your answers as you go and be very confident by the time you get to the end of the paper that you've got 100% or something very close to it. I hope that's been of help to you, Dana Shan. I hope it's been of help to you generally, whoever you may be watching. Uh, please subscribe if you're not already a subscriber. Please comment uh, below and like. click on the like button. That all helps. And I certainly love seeing your feedback. And as always, I thank you very much for watching.